Hi, I'm Greg Grant, the Smith County Horticulturist for the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service in Tyler, Texas. Today we're visiting the Idea Garden, a part of the Tyler Botanic Garden, located in the Tyler Rose Garden in Tyler, Texas. The 10,000 square foot Idea Garden is a project and a product of the Tyler Master Gardeners. Uh, it was originated in 1996 as a brainchild of Keith Hansen, the former Smith County Horticulturist, who you heard earlier talk about his own shade garden. Also, it was an idea of Sue Aidy, a member of the Tyler Master Gardeners, not just any member, she was a member of the very first class and she was the first president of the Smith County Master Gardener Association. So the idea garden got started in 1996, it was officially dedicated in 1999, some upgrades in 2001, and then in 2020, it was declared a portion of the Tyler Botanic Garden, which is a compilation of all the volunteer uh, run demonstration gardens at my Smith County Master Gardeners run here in Tyler. And so we're going to take a look at some plants today. We're going to take a look at a statue dedicated to Sue. We're going to praise Keith Hansen a bit. And we're not going to cover all of the plants in this garden because there's 600 plus. So I know you're going to have lots of questions. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them in the chat room while I'm talking about it. So welcome to the Idea Garden in Tyler, Texas. This bronze statue of Sue 80 is named A Woman's Touch. And this garden certainly has a woman's touch. And even though we give Keith Hansen credit for this garden, we all know that Sue 80, the late, late Sue 80, had a hand in this garden because it was her idea uh, to make this a pretty spot for people. And it didn't start out as a pretty spot in the garden. This southeast corner of the Tyler Rose Garden was originally the dumping ground for this garden, which included bare dirt, sticks, rubble, grass clippings, concrete, nothing pretty at all. So like a lot of famous gardens in the world, it started as something ugly and partly thanks to Sue A.D. it turned into something pretty. As I mentioned before, Sue was a member of the very first Master Gardener class here in Smith County and was the president of the original Smith County Master Gardeners Association. The garden is full of different plants. The reason it's called the Idea Garden, it's an acronym that Keith came up with and it stands for Innovate, Demonstrate, Educate, and Apply. So the whole principle behind the Idea Garden is to show people what they can do in their own residential gardens uh, partly with design, but mostly with plant selection. So I know we're not going to cover every plant you have a question about in this garden. We'll do our best in the chat room to help you. But this garden has over 600 different uh, kinds of plants in 10,000 square feet. So it's more flowering plants than what most people would have in their garden. A lot of sun, also some shade. Some of the plants you see right here would be variegated abelia. Uh, we've got sparkler gomfrina. We've got lots of periwinkles, which love to heat. And as I'm talking about periwinkles, remember that periwinkles love heat. They, they're from Africa. They don't like moisture. They don't like overhead irrigation. And so if you overwater a periwinkle, you're going to get Aeropotoptera. And so the Cora series of periwinkles is actually a Texas Superstar selection. Uh, we have a number of Texas Superstars in this garden. You'll see some rose mallow hibiscus, or what my great grandmother called dishpan hibiscus, blooming here. We've got a tropical plant, brainia or snow bush, with the variegated foliage, and a dwarf version of Gara Lindheimeri, uh, a native Texas plant uh, named after the father of Texas botany, Ferdinand Lindheimer. So now let's go take a look at the Texas Superstar bed in the Idea Garden. We have a number of different beds showcasing uh, a myriad of plants here in the Idea Garden. One of those beds is dedicated to Texas Superstars. Texas Superstars are tested and trialed throughout the state. Uh, you can go to texassuperstar.com uh, and look at the list of the plants. The Texas Department of Agriculture puts out a wonderful publication on Texas Superstars, including a brand new, uh, newly published publication on Texas Superstars. We don't have all the Texas Superstar plants here, but we have a lot of them. You'll see things like napier grass uh, with the burgundy Aggie maroon foliage, a nice uh, tropical annual tender perennial. Uh, we have uh, Angelonia, which some people call uh, summer snapdragon. Uh, a native of Mexico, a uh, beautiful plant that tolerates warm conditions. Behind me you'll see golden uh, thryallus, uh, a tender tropical uh, annual or tender perennial in lower portions of the state, which will do good in sun or shade and has bright yellow flowers. So a lot of different plants here uh, that thrive under minimal care, minimal fertility, uh, minimal irrigation in Tyler, but not only Tyler, other portions of the state as well. So if you're interested in Texas Superstars, visit the Texas Superstar website. One of the outstanding perennials here in the Texas Superstar portion of the Idea Garden in Tyler is Turk's Cap. 
Turk's cap is a member of the hibiscus family, makes small red flowers in the shape of a Turk's turban where it got its name. It's an amazing plant because it'll grow in full hot sun. You see me sweating here. Or it'll grow in full shade. It'll grow in alkaline soil. It'll grow in acid soils. It'll grow in moist soils. It'll grow in dry soils. It has somewhat edible fruit, once known as Mexican love apples. It attracts sulfur butterflies all summer, and it attracts hummingbirds all summer, and probably more hummingbirds in the fall than any other Texas perennial that we can grow in our garden. So Texas uh, superstars encompass a lot of different plants, but none better than the Turk's cap. Turk's cap, as I mentioned, traditionally comes in red-orange, but also can rarely be white, pale pink, or even coral pink, like the Pam's Prairie Turk's cap that I introduced. This is a pale white selection, not near as showy, but still beloved by hummingbirds, butterflies, and native bees, as I see a bumblebee a pollinating as we speak. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this when it gets more shade than the red one we saw earlier, and so one thing that I like to do on Turk's cap is give them a shearing uh, once a month. And so if you cut off the top of this plant, even at waist high or shoulder high, it makes it branch out, it blooms on new growth, and you don't get a gangly plant. So as I mentioned, it tends to uh, grow taller in the sun or sprawl in the shade. But a good pair of hedge clippers or even gas parrot head shears like I use at home can tidy up Turk's cap, make them more bushy, branch out, and have a much better habit. I've even grown them as clipped shrubs before. And so they're a tender perennial, normally go dormant during the winter time, but if you're in South Texas, they may not go dormant at all, so you're probably going to need to at least cut them down once a year, but I prefer shearing them once a month during the summertime. Now you'll see behind me here uh, a nest box for the eastern bluebird. We have an eastern bluebird trail here in the Tyler Botanical Garden, and so we have lots of bluebirds in, in East Texas, probably more than any portion of the state. But the eastern bluebird can range anywhere from Central Texas to East Texas. As you go further west in Texas, you also have uh, mountain bluebirds uh, and the western bluebird out there and so bluebirds need a, uh, a nest box that mimics a, an old woodpecker hole and so we get these things cleaned out uh, at Valentine's Day uh, they can have as many as three broods during the season and so we clean them out between each nesting we can also um, have uh, chickadees or titmice occasionally a, a bat in one of our bluebird houses and that's okay and so if you need more information on bluebird trails or having a bluebird nest box in your own landscape, uh, visit the Texas Bluebird Society website. And I have to mention I'm a lifetime member of the Texas Bluebird Society. So we love our bluebirds as much as our flowers here at the Idea Garden. Also, I wish you were standing here and you could smell how wonderful it smells. Not the Turk's cap, but the butterfly ginger. And so butterfly ginger is a wonderful uh, perennial. It actually prefers moisture and sunshine. In this particular case, it's got moisture and some shade. So it can range from uh, part shade, even full shade. It's just the more shade you give it, the fewer the blooms. If you give it full sun and no moisture though, you'll have burned foliage. And so this is Hedicium coronarium of the butterfly ginger, not the same as the edible ginger uh, that you cook with. Mostly grown for the incredible fragrance and the fact that the flowers actually look like um, butterflies, hence the name butterfly ginger. Hedicium coronarium, the traditional butterfly ginger, comes in white to attract pollinators at night. It's intensely fragrant, and as you can see, the flowers are shaped like butterflies. So it's not known for being a butterfly plant, it's known for the fact that the flowers are shaped like butterflies. But there are many species of Fidicium, once again, not the same genus uh, as ginger that we cook with, but you'll see also in the Idea Garden other types of ginger, which can be orange flowered, yellow flowered, variegated foliage, even some other species. They're still considered gingers. Uh, not necessarily butterfly ginger. So butterfly ginger is always a ginger, but ginger is not always a butterfly ginger. So a great place to come see common things and unusual things alike, uh, including traditional butterfly gingers and more unusual butterfly gingers that don't necessarily even look like a butterfly. One of the beauties of the Idea Garden here in Tyler is the fact that we have some sun and some shade. So we get to show people plants that will grow in different areas, including some of them like the Turk's cap that can grow in full sun or full shade. So here you see me with some sun coleus, which doesn't mean they have to grow in sun. Things like Alabama sunset, actually getting a little sunburn here, because uh, some plants have trouble going back and forth from sun to shade. But these are just some examples of the colorful plants that we can grow in the shade or the sun here in the garden. Uh, another one of those plants would be the Philippine lily, which we're going to go look at next. The Philippine lily is an amazing plant. It's been in Texas garden for years, but only become more popular here recently. It's a lily that's native to, to Taiwan. The botanical name is Lilium formosanum, uh, the old name for, for Taiwan. 
It's a beautiful summer growing lily, a true lily, uh, unlike most of the lilies, the fake lilies we grow in Texas that are members of the Amaryllis family. So other than the tiger lily and the Easter lily, it's one of the few lilies that does extremely well in most parts of Texas. Not only does it do well, it actually sets seed and naturalizes, not to the point of being an obnoxious invasive, uh, just to being a reseeding perennial in the garden. As you can see here in the garden, they can grow in anywhere from full sun to almost full shade. In shady situations, they grow tall. I've got some at home that are six feet tall. In sunny locations, they tend to grow shorter, uh, generally about knee or, or waist high. So a lot of different variation in the Philippine lilies. Uh, and now I like to let them set their seed during the winter time. The winter winds blow them around. They look like tiny little grass seedlings when they come up in the spring. Uh, and again, sometimes they'll come up in the fall, but mostly in the spring. And if you don't want the seedlings to come up, you just cut off the seed pods. And if you don't want the seedlings to stay, you just pull them up. So certainly not an invasive plant, but a wonderful cottage garden-like perennial to grow in Texas gardens, the Philippine lily. Philippine lily is a true lily, but there are many other plants in Texas gardens that aren't true lilies that we call lilies. And a good example of that would be the crinum lily. Crinum lilies are actually members of the amaryllis family, not in the lily family at all. And it's kind of like saying crinum, crinum, since the word crinum was Greek for lily. And so you can call them lilies, you can call them crinums, you can call them crinum lilies but really not in the lily family, they're in the amaryllis family. A lot of different crinums that we grow in, in East Texas, a lot of different crinums grown throughout the state. Most of them are known for their fragrance. This is summer nocturne, which actually smells like a combination of Fruit Loop and your mother's perfume. An amazing fragrance in the garden. Now, I do love fragrance in the garden, and so it's, it's good to have, even though it's growing in partial shade here, most crinum lilies prefer full sun and moisture, uh, just like the, the ginger lily does. Now, I'll teach you a few things about crinum lilies. Uh, every flower bud on a crinum lily is going to open up and when it goes past they'll droop and hang down and the flowers will wilt and as soon as it wilts and doesn't look pretty anymore you literally just snap those flowers off there and discard them that way your bouquet is always full of fresh flowers. Eventually every flower here is going to finish and you're going to have an ugly stalk left on here and you can either pull them off um, if you're strong enough or you can cut them off uh, at the base of the plant with a pair of hand pruners and so I typically give them a quick tug almost like picking corn snatch it right out of there and throw it aside and that way your plant always looks good I say it always looks good because crinums are so tough and as my mentor Dr. William C. Welch said no crinum has ever died and so they live forever literally and they live all the way from the last frost until the first frost and so a lot of times you're going to get some foliage on them that might be ugly might have a little stagnospora fungus it might have a little bit of insect damage on there and so unlike spring bulbs and fall bulbs where you never want to cut off the foliage crinums can periodically have the foliage cut off if they look bad so you don't want to make a habit of it but they have a long enough growing season to be able to replace that foliage and still make blooms uh, for next year now not all crinums bloom at the same time we have early blooming crinums mid-season crinums late season crinums some of them are pretty good repeaters some of them don't some are nocturne happens to be a good repeater uh, and crinums, being a relative of a rain lily, tend to bloom best after irrigations or after summer rainfall. And so if the fragrance of the summer nocturne crinum wasn't up, right next to me is a plant of almond verbena, which is neither an almond nor a verbena, but still a wonderful plant, grown primarily for the fragrance. It's actually a, a tree in South Texas. We grow it as a herbaceous perennial here. It has a wonderful fragrance that attracts uh, bees and butterflies alike, the almond verbena. Another plant here in the Idea Garden is the John Fannick Phlox. So John Fannick Phlox is a, an old garden phlox I found off Rigsby Street in San Antonio years ago and named it for the late John Fannick at Fannick's Nursery in San Antonio. It's one of the few perennial phlox that you can grow in Texas. It's some color other than magenta, which is the wild color in phlox paniculata from the southeastern U.S. So John Fannick has soft pink flowers with dark pink eyes. It's a good rebloomer. It's a great butterfly plant. You'll see not only bees, but lots of butterflies uh, buzzing around me here, uh, particularly some of the really pretty swallowtails, like the giant swallowtail and the tiger swallowtail will pollinate John Fannick flocks, as well as the different moths at nighttime. So right now I see a silver-spotted skipper nectaring on here, and it's a great time to visit a garden during the summertime because that's when our pollinators are out, particularly in the morning time. Behind me you'll see a cigar plant in the genus Cufia, same genus as Mexican heather, and so this is David Verity uh, cigar plant. Some people uh, call it candy corn uh, plant, but she's also used for Cufia micropetala, the, the fall cigar plant. So this particular one blooms all summer. 
probably no better plant for, for bees in the garden uh, of assorted types, including our hundreds of native bees, uh, than cigar plants. So good for hummingbirds, but also uh, native bees as well as uh, honey bees. So this is cigar plant. This is John Fanick Phlox. I know I'll open up a can of worms, or in this case a can of bees, by talking about uh, bees and, and allergies. So you're looking at a person who's had an anaphylactic reaction to, to bees, but I'm never fearful of bees in the garden because these guys are out working and they're pollinating plants and they're collecting pollen and they're uh, collecting nectar. And so when you get stung by bees and wasps is when you're around their family and they're protecting their children. And so naturally they're going to be mad if they fear for the life of their, of their children. So I'm not worried at all about in this case our native bumblebees or we've got humming, uh, honeybees on here. We've got uh, uh, skipper butterflies, a number of different uh, bees pollinating kufia at all time during the summer, but I'm never fearful of, of bees in my garden. I am fearful of my German Shepherd Jules who likes to try to eat the bees in the garden and he tears up my plants when I do it. And so the main thing with, with bees and wasps is to stay away from their nest because that's where they're going to be the most protective. One of the plants that gets a lot of, lots of attention here in the idea garden is the sunshine ligustrum, all the rage across the United States right now, particularly the eastern United States. Uh, in Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, where you have extremely alkaline soils and your plants are chlorotic from iron chlorosis, most people don't want to buy a yellow shrub to put in the yard. I know when I worked as director of research and development at Lone Star Growers in San Antonio, they would laugh at me if I talked about selling a yellow foliage shrub when everybody's saying, why are my shrubs turning yellow in the landscape? But it is a popular plant uh, for a variation in color. Keith uh, talked about in his shade garden about altering colors and texture uh, on foliage in the landscape and so sunshine ligustrum is, is a good example of that. Now granted I don't want all my shrubs in the landscape being yellow, I don't want all my shrubs in the landscape being burgundy. I personally think shrubs are supposed to be green but every now and then if you want some diversity or a focal point or an accent it's okay to have something with colorful foliage, either variegated or golden leaf like the sunshine ligustrum or something like laurel petalum with the burgundy foliage. Mexican heather is also in the genus Cufia along with cigar plant and just like cigar plant it also attracts a, a plethora of, of bees both uh, bumblebees and honeybees and wasps and bees that mimic flies and flies that mimic bees so uh, plants in the genus Cufia are a great plant uh, for pollinators particularly native bees so would you believe that uh, Mexican heather and cigar plant are in the same family as a crepe myrtle? They are and crepe myrtles are also bee pollinated front of the idea garden located here at the Tyler Botanic Garden is the rainbow border. Originally designed as a long perennial border showcasing plants from all spectrums of the rainbow. Today it's a mixed herbaceous border uh, or a mixed border entirely because it contains woody shrubs like this dwarf pomegranate here with the pretty orange flowers, drought tolerant plant, small inedible fruit, although I suppose it's edible if you're hungry enough. Um, side note, did you know that a king's crown was designed uh, from the calyx lobes of a pomegranate fruit. So an ancient plant been propagated and uh, cultivated for years as a sign of fertility. Also uh, among the many different plants in the perennial border uh, here at the front of the idea garden would be porter weed. Not a weed, a uh, tender tropical or an annual plant grown throughout uh, Texas in gardens, primarily uh, for the long spikes of flowers which can be blue, purple, coral, in this case almost red, but a great plant for bees and other pollinators, particularly butterflies. And so uh, butterfly plants tend to love plants and flowers that belong primarily in the sunflower family and in the verbena family. And so verbena includes lantana, verbenas, and porterweed uh, in the genus Stachytarpheta. If you get on Jeopardy and that question comes up. And so porterweed, a great summer color plant uh, for butterflies here in Texas gardens. I was hot and sweaty. But now I'm cool and dry because I found a nice shady spot in the idea garden underneath a variegated confederate jasmine. So a number of different benches and places to sit down in the idea garden and plenty of trails and paths to walk on. The idea garden is just one of the gardens located here at the Tyler Botanical Garden, a part of the Tyler Rose Garden, funded, designed, and maintained by the Smith County Master Gardeners. So we have work days each Tuesday to work in the idea garden. Uh, the Smith County Master Gardeners have a nice Facebook page that you can visit. The Smith County Master Gardeners have a web page you can visit. The Idea Garden is no charge. It's a part of the Tyler Rose Garden. It's open seven days a week. 
we just ask that you respect the flowers and help keep it neat and tidy and don't leave anything behind when you leave. Take all the pictures you want. It's a great place to visit. Uh, we have first Tuesdays in the garden in the spring and fall, at least when we have uh, uh, visiting times. Things aren't normal these days, but hopefully we'll eventually get back to our first Tuesdays in the garden. This is Smith County Master Gardeners. Uh, invite you to their award-winning idea garden uh, 365 days a year. Thanks for joining us.